program it and go and do other work. Need not sit next to the system. They can just go and then do their other job. And by the time like the instrument, the uh, analysis is over, let us say within an hour or something, then one can come and take out the result. So this kind of system which has evolved, the advantage is that as uh, uh, you may be aware uh, that you know, all these reagents which are enzymes, which are substrates, all will have to be stored at my uh, will, will have to be stored in the refrigerator at four to eight degree. So if the uh, reagents are kept outside, especially temperature like Chennai or even entire in, in entire India during the peak summer, it goes up to 50 also. Definitely the substrate depletion will take place and then the results will not be very, very accurate. So this instrument, it has got inbuilt refrigeration and it has got uh, so that the temperature will be maintained. So one need not after the analysis, take out the reagent from the equipment and bring it back to the refrigerator. The instrument, as long as the instrument is on, the reagents can be kept in the instrument itself. So this kind of an advantage has come. And basically all these things, if you look at um, how they uh, know the things have developed, uh, it is basically as the old saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. So all students uh, keep that uh, good old saying in your mind permanently. Necessity is definitely the mother of invention. So as the previous speaker was saying, uh, the Vaccine development in India happened within a rapid time because after the first pandemic. Uh, and in fact, we are very proud that uh, the Bharat Biotech, the co-founder, uh, uh, Mrs. Suchitra Ella, and she's also the recipient of uh, Padma Bhushan Award. She's also the recipient of our Biotechnology uh, Innovation Award she received last year. We conducted the Biotech Conclave and uh, from the Golden Jubilee Biotech Park, she received that award. So we are very proud of her. So the necessity came, the COVID, uh, the, uh, what do you call the COVID virus brought the necessity and then the vaccine came out as an innovation. So same way, uh, please stick to that basic uh, thing that uh, the necessity is the mother of invention so that uh, whenever there is a necessity comes, there is always innovation can happen. So this is again, I want to give you another example how the flame photometer was in use uh, for analyzing the electrolytes. All of you know, uh, for uh, uh, knowing the balance of the body, one needs to analyze this, you know, and, uh, electrolytes, potassium, sodium, lithium, and calcium, all these things which are to be done. So this was again done in a manual method where the uh, coloring of the light was, uh, you know, uh, basically the, uh, 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 what do you call the measuring parameter, measuring uh, uh, point, you know, where one has to observe the color and then uh, if it is uh, no dark blue, then say, uh, what do you call the potassium? If it is yellow, then say sodium and things like that. But this could be very ambiguous. Uh, so some people uh, may not be able to really distinguish between the color and then there could be ambiguous in the variation and no, the uh, result. Uh, so to overcome this difficulty, uh, the instrument has come into play. And uh, this is something which works on the ion selective electrode. It is called ISE model. So this has been also in the use for last more than 20 years also. And again, these were all imported nowadays in India. It's all uh, manufactured, uh, very good quality equipment, which are manufactured. This instrument is again, almost like a fully automated system uh, where the reagents are kept in the instrument itself. One needs to just feed the sample. Either it could be serum or it could be urine. Just feed it, it will give all the result. The electrodes, everything is kept inside the instrument itself. One need not see the color or anything, but the instrument will give a very, very accurate result. So again, you can see the uh, development in uh, innovation has happened because of the limitation which the manual method had, the fully automated system like this, which has come. So here I would like to ask the students, the participants, uh, can anyone uh, identify who is this person? You can just uh, put it in chat and uh, uh, let me know if anyone can identify this, this scientist. Hello, any student are you able to recognize who is the scientist? Uh, just uh, wait, this one also will do, wild guess, which we call it. Do you agree he's, he's a scientist? Elizabeth, ma'am. <laughs> Hello. 
I think some three chats have come, four chats have come. Anyone? Pfizer, Louis Pasteur. Yeah, who has said this? Ronjan. I think uh, Safina. Congratulations, Safina. Yes, uh, he's Ronjan. Yeah, great. Uh, Safina, congrats to you. Yeah, so Ranjan actually uh, was doing some experiment uh, in his, he's a basically a physicist uh, from Germany. And uh, he was uh, doing some research in a city called Wuzbek. Uh, incidentally, I have been to this city, Wuzbek, uh, uh, Germany. Uh, it's a very nice, uh, nicely located place, a very peaceful uh, environment to do a lot of research. So he did his research in uh, one of the experiments in physics and then uh, wanted to find out, uh, no, a kind of uh, uh, this one, no? Yeah, a thick object. So if a ray is passed, so what will happen? So that's how the X-rays have come into play. And we all know the benefit, uh, the X-rays, uh, which was given uh, for uh, over a period of, uh, let us say, 100 years, 120 years also to the mankind. So thanks to him, thanks to the scientists like him, many, many other uh, incidents which have happened in the past. Uh, so I urge all the students to think on that line. If one Ranjan can uh, identify this kind of an X-ray, uh, we also can do so please uh, put your thoughts and brain and everything in towards this kind of an innovation uh, many scientists are there going to the time constraint we will not go in at length but then this is kind of an inspiration which we can derive from him this is something like uh, market i just wanted to know because uh, all of you students like once you complete your pg or research then you would wonder like no where will i be absorbed how will i get the job at that uh, can I start my own business and things like that? So this kind of a market, which is uh, available, uh, this one, almost 40,000 crore in the Indian market, uh, a various field, like it includes the imaging diagnosis, uh, uh, to clinical diagnostic, molecular diagnostic, everything put together. So 40,000 crore is not a small uh, market. It's a very, very huge market. Every one of us can be absorbed in this and then we have to contribute that. Uh, this is something uh, segment I have just listed it out and uh, how much uh, uh, every segment like immunology, critical care, chemistry, biochemistry, all those things, how it is uh, varied. So if one knows, let us say biochemistry, it is easy to know hematology also. So do not think that, no, I'm only, I only know biotechnology, whether will I be able to grasp biochemistry, will I be able to grasp molecular diagnostic, uh, all those things. So you do not have, if you have the basic science, definitely you will be able to uh, uh, learn everything because that is a foundation. If we have, we'll be able to. Know. If you know to drive, drive Maruti I tender, definitely we'll be able to drive a BMW also. It doesn't make much of difference. In fact, rather BMW will be much easier because of the technology advancement. So please uh, bear that in mind. Do not have any inhibition uh, as far as uh, learning is concerned. So do not think that whether will I be able to learn this molecular technique, will I be able to learn this electrophoresis, things like that. We'll be able to do that. Yeah. And uh, this is, I uh, have put it, uh, current trends in the medical devices. We have seen how the technology was there in 1800, how it came in 1950, then 1980. Then the latest technology we have seen, what is in use now, the current trends which is going to be in future or which has already started uh, taking its shape in, uh, in, in today's uh, time. So basically, uh, people are going towards non-invasive technology. Uh, well, when, you, when you take, uh, when you want to, Anal do analysis, uh, you need a blood sample means really you need to uh, do your venipuncture and then take the blood and then or a capillary puncture, take the drop of the blood and then do the analysis. Uh, so this is very painful exercise one has to go through, uh, both the phlebotomist as well as the uh, patients. So nowadays we are coming out with the non-invasive technology. And uh, with this non-invasive technology, like artificial intelligence and machine learning, these are the two things which are coming into play. Artificial intelligence and machine learning means the machine as as, as an as we are doing the analysis on the uh, patient, the uh, machine uh, keeps the data and the algorithm and then starts learning about it. And then it comes out its own uh, ideas. It comes out its own perceptions. So based on that, it improvises itself. It's not a dead machine no more. It's a artificially intelligent machine so that it also learns and then helps our, uh, uh, no, our findings. So this is what is going on order of the day in Western countries, especially in US and Europe. The machine learning is very, very popular. As a biotechnologist, we need not learn about, uh, we need not uh, uh, develop a machine learning uh, methodology or anything, but we should know what machine learning is all about. 
Uh, then comes the telemedicine. So again, the telemedicine has been done uh, since 2000 or even before. Uh, but then the popularity has come now because after this COVID pandemic, uh, everyone had to uh, know, uh, restrain a lot of lockdowns and all those things were there. So even the uh, patient, like for example, the diabetic patient, they could not go and meet the doctor once in two months or three months. They have taken the consultation through telemedicine and then followed their medicine so that uh, they all uh, uh, help to uh, know, take care of their health. So this kind of telemedicine is now coming out and also the telemedicine will help uh, reaching the uh, facility to the rural areas from the urban. So maybe a doctor who is a specialist sitting in Chennai, they can address one uh, a small village down the line, Tirunel Valley or beyond or Ramanathapuram somewhere and then you know, give, a, uh, uh, give a consultation on a uh, very advanced cancer or anything like that. So this kind of uh, bridging the gap between the cities and the villages, it has happened through the telemedicine. Uh, then comes the 3D printing, 3D bioprinting, rather we call it. So this is also one of the very latest technology which is going to be ruling for next 30 to 40 years or 50 years also. So please learn about what are the th these three these things. And robotics is already playing a very vital role in uh, taking part in the surgery and things like that. So these are some of the current trends I have just put it, which is going to be the future of uh, medical device technologies. Uh, so with uh, uh, regard to this picture, uh, this uh, slide actually, this is uh, one of our incubators, uh, as you know, Golden Jubilee Biotech Park, uh, where we have our R&D center and a lot of uh, research people, they work to develop their research into a product. So Dr. Geetanjali Radhakrishnan, uh, she uh, has been with us for the last five to six years, and she had an idea that uh, she wanted to come out with a non-invasive medical device for a diabetic foot ulcer, diabetic wound detection device. Uh, Normally, diabetic wound, the, uh, no, the, uh, with the swab, the biopsy is done. Uh, they, have, they, they have to take a small tissue from the wound and then send it to the pathologist. Then the result, normally it's gone within three to four days. So this, she has come out with a device where the device can give the result within 60 seconds and you need not take a swab or anything. So we need to just keep the device just 15 centimeter away from the wound and the device will pick up and say whether it's a bacterial infection or a fungi infection. So she has won many awards, national and international awards, and uh, many hospitals are using it uh, in Chennai uh, across the country. So this kind of an innovation one needs to come out. Uh, uh, let us say about seven to eight years or 10 years back, she was also a student like you, but then something uh, clicked in her mind that she should come out with this. She understood the problem, what's going on around her. And then this idea has clicked her and then she incubated here, then started working on that idea for the last four to five years. Now the device has come and has started winning many awards as well as many customers have started using it. So this is how the development happens. And this system has got the artificial intelligence. This system has got the machine learning also, the algorithm and everything. Okay, this is just an example I wanted to give you that how practically it is possible to develop this kind of a device. And uh, okay, uh, as we are all, uh, uh, as a biotech part, in the ecosystem, uh, working very much aligned with the central government and the state government, uh, we nurture the uh, entrepreneurs and then uh, give a right platform to the entrepreneurs to become successful. And these are the three things one needs to have in their mind, idea, planning and realization. The success will come in between, we are there as to give you the right platform so that you will be able to achieve the success easily. So this is again the launch pad. I just put it for any rocket as you need the launch pad uh, for your dream to launch the biotech park is available. So you can utilize our facility. You can utilize our expertise to excel in your career. This is the BioNest uh, uh, center, the facility which we have, the state of the art facility. Dr. Elizabeth and uh, uh, her team have visited many times. I think most of your students also would have come here. So this is again the gel dock instrument and RT-PCR and HPLC and things like that we have. There's a list of instruments which we have. Any students can come and do the project and take it forward their research into your product, prototype and product. This is something uh, the park has been, uh, journey has been uh, since 2001, almost 23 companies which are headed by women entrepreneurs functioning in our park. And more than 400 personnel, out of which almost 75 percent of them are women. And you can see the number of uh, grants they have won, and also the number of uh, amount of fund which they have raised. So all these things which are happening in the park. 
This is one last slide, uh, which I would like to ask uh, how many of you students have come across this book written by Spencer Johnson. Like this, you can chat again. Who moved my cheese? It's very, very famous book in uh, 90s, late 90s. And even today, it's context, uh, it's very, very relevant. Any of you heard of this book? By the way, uh, I would uh, uh, no, uh, request all the students to uh, have a small uh, shelf for, uh, uh, if it is possible, a small library in your home. Uh, so the digital library, definitely it helps, definitely no doubt about it, but nothing like a physical library where it doesn't strain your uh, eyes, it doesn't uh, emit any rays, so that you, know, uh, you all can uh, uh, no, read as much as you can. You will not get tired by reading those books. Uh, so nothing like reading that. So I would uh, request to do that. Uh, uh, so this, uh, uh, I think no answer has come. So I would like to say that uh, this is actually something related to a uh, change is the only thing which is constant. Uh, so normally we have been hearing that change is the only thing which is constant. So Spencer Johnson's through a small tale, he actually communicates, conveys the, a strong message that you know the, we have to keep pace with the technology. So otherwise we'll be outdated. Uh, so all the young scientists here, uh, please uh, remember this change is the only thing which is constant and keep pace with the technology. Keep reading books, keep reading, look around and what's happening around the world so that you'll be able to excel. Thanks a lot. With that, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you so much, sir, for the very Thank invitation. Thank you so much. Uh, kind, yeah. of, kind attention to the delegates and participants. Uh, please, please post your questions in the uh, question and answer box. At the end of the program, it will be clear, uh, clarified by our eminent speakers. I'm very much honored to introduce the second speaker of the day, respected Dr. S. Elmani, sir, Professor and Biotechnology, University of Madras. He is having a very wide range of academ academia with 20 years of teaching experience. He has completed his PhD in University of Madras and most associate in Australia. He has been visiting scientists to, to many foreign countries. Few to highlight are Finland, South Africa, Denmark, and Sweden. He has published <laughs> With a small introduction, I like now I would invite mm -hmm. Mr. Dr. S. Placer to give his presentation on the topic Technology and Science Integration in Agriculture. Over to you, sir. Is it audible? Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Good morning, is it sir. Visible? The slides are visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Good morning. Okay. Okay. Very good morning. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the authorities in uh, Hindustan College and uh, Hindustan University, um, Madam Susan Martandan, uh, Professor Tirumurugan. Uh, Thirumagan, Principal Sir, and uh, Madam LNGM Dean Research, HOD, Dr. Elizabeth, and Dr. Mohana Piriya Mo Mohan Kumar, and, and uh, my fellow faculty members, my dear beloved students. Today we are celebrating the National Science Day. Um, before going to the technical session, I would like to share some of my thoughts, like um, thoughts and my experience. Before coming to the University of Madras, I worked in a residency college for about 18 years as a faculty member. So I had a chance uh, to organize science, uh, National Science Day in that college because we have the pride and privilege to organize uh, in presidency college because C.V. Raman worked there. And till date, we are maintaining what the experiment uh, instrument which he used for the Raman effect Still, they are keeping there. Many people around the country, around the globe, they used to come here and, and see the uh, experiments because it is one of the seminal discovery of all science uh, uh, research-related uh, activities. 
so this is our uh, background because uh, why i am saying this i am also part of this uh, science day programs uh, every year wherever whenever i was there so today the topic of the lecture is role of science and technology integration in agriculture that is uh, declared by the uh, un see zero hunger by the time of 2030 through sustainable agriculture so before going to this topic i would like to say again few words about the background of indian agriculture when we got uh, the independence we are uh, almost facing severe food shortage and crunch uh, to feed our uh, those days it is about 35 crores of people now it is almost uh, more than 100 135 crores so we reached almost 140 uh, crore people but those days 35 crore people even they can't feed they they don't have enough uh, food grains or, or other related food commodities so those, those days in usa they have a pl 480 that is public law 480 whatever the excess uh, grains whatever the excess potato they used to send all southeast asia or asian countries because almost all of the southeast asian and asian countries faced severe food shortage or food grain shortage so through pl 480 we got lot of uh, grains through shipments and uh, through the shipment of food grains we got the other uh, disadvantage also the parthenium we invited through that uh, pl 480 donations so after that we faced bengal famine it is one of the major because these are all the things faculty you might be known but for the benefit and the well being of the students i am sharing the bengal famine created a very very big havoc in the indian community especially food and agricultural issues so a lot of hunger death malnutrition undernutrition and so on and so forth happened in the eastern part of india so immediately the policy makers they called uh, uh, a public meeting and the policy meeting so fortunately we had in india we had a first uh, agriculture minister from his name dr c subramaniam late bharat ratna subramaniam initiated the program green revolution so he is the policy making highest body in consultation with uh, the prime minister of india then he was helped by professor m s swaminathan both of them from tamil nadu we are uh, proudly claiming that agriculture today what the agriculture is uh, having in india even if it is more than 140 crore people we are not making uh, any grain or anything from other country except uh, farm oil or some small commodities so other things we are self reliant and self sustainable because of these two two people's initiative and we are now uh, involving a lot of science and technology devices tools we improve our agriculture and we are self reliant and self sufficient with reference to uh, uh, food uh, food grains or or fruits vegetables horticultural crops production once in the, uh, um, uh, late uh, prime minister jawaharlal nehru ji said everything can wait but not agriculture this is a very famous proverb given by our our spell out by uh, jawaharlal nehru so with this background i will move on to the technical uh, so this is one of the best book i can say like uh, science and technology and innovation for sustainable development goals including agriculture so this is with reference to insights from agriculture health environment and energy so this is one of the fine book and the latest book If anybody want you can you can go through this book you can get a whole bunch of issues which we are dealing today just now my uh, my predecessor my my earlier speaker also uh, talk about the uh, technology race and chasing the technology all this so we have to roll along the technology otherwise we will be thrown out or we will be sidelined by somebody else whoever the technological giants they are uh, they are overcoming the other countries so we need to uh, put a lot of uh, Uh, funding or investments to the, the innovations or discoveries and so on and so forth through funding agencies and uh, other uh, private bodies like industries the recent one the success story is uh, the ela uh, what is that uh, uh, covid vaccine developed by one of our own indian company uh, hyderabad based uh, company bharat biotech 
so what do you mean by sustainable agriculture agriculture uh, it is a age old process and it is not a new science um, the sustained agriculture means the agriculture should be there we need to produce enough grains and enough uh, horticulture crops uh, tubers fruits vegetables uh, everything but not at the cost of environment or ecosystem we are not supposed to disturb the natural uh, balance of ecosystem so this should be a balanced one so the sustainable agriculture is uh, directly related to environmental sustainability economic sustainability social sustainability so these are the three major parameters all the three are interconnected so that we can maintain a sustainable agriculture if you are producing large quantity of grains but at the cost of environmental degradation that that won't be a good model so we need to be a balanced one so the basic history of uh, sustainable agriculture started year uh, 1900 slowly it is moving to moving to uh, innovations discoveries in terms of machinery equipments chemicals fertilizers fungicides pesticides and uh, agriculture research and knowledge new technology started during 1960 as i said earlier in the green revolution we have imported uh, <coughs> or introduced the variety called warf uh, each variety from mexico because uh, generously uh, sponsored or given by the late nobel laureate uh, norman barlag Uh, i had a chance to interact with him in uh, one of the plant breeding institute in australia he came to kobiti there is a place called kobiti kobiti plant breeding research center he worked for a uh, he worked a brief stint like 3 years as the advisor of the institute so uh, there uh, there i had a chance to interact with him he is one of the pioneer and the, the mentor in the agriculture uh, revolution or green revolution uh, throughout the globe so he uh, dr professor swaminathan is his disciple or or is a student like uh, um, person who transformed the dwarf variety into india and he disseminated this variety into all northern parts of the wheat belt called uh, up punjab haryana bihar and other places and now we are uh, self self reliant with reference to wheat production likewise we have uh, uh, um, agriculture production in the case of rice also we are self sufficient vegetables also we have self sufficient under the esteemed leadership of icr and ichr all this so why do you want to call this agriculture instead of agri science because there are certain science is pure science some of them are uh, related to culture because what we are practicing in south india the paddy cultivation is not exactly practicing in the eastern in eastern part of india so it is directly related to culture so whatever the horticulture crops what we are doing in the brinjal or the kind of farms in horticulture the north eastern part or the northern part they are not following they have their own uh, local system likewise floriculture likewise pisciculture so these are all the subjects or these are all the science directly related to the local community or local uh, uh, atmosphere and uh, uh, science so this is one of the traditional agricultural model with reference to cabbage production even if you look at or if you go to the western part of tamil nadu like ozur or or other uti so you can see this kind of uh, traditional agriculture so the traditional agriculture is nothing but we are just sowing the seed and harvesting the commodity or the grains or vegetables without harming any environmental degradation that is what the traditional agriculture otherwise called organic agriculture now it's a fancy name to uh, spell out by everyone so the traditional agriculture is without having any disturbance of the natural ecosystem or environment at the same time we are producing the enough uh, uh, agricultural commodities that is the traditional agriculture about 9 uh, 795 million people or even ninth every ninth person uh, in the world and majority living in the developing countries and rural areas because this is a social issue issue because of the low income because of the low employment because of the low socio economic status all this made them uh, not able to have the proper or balanced diet even people like me i am a professor and the majority of them are professor here in this meeting also 
we are not taking the balanced food every day even though we had enough uh, income and so on so forth because of so many social reasons so the because of the unbalanced diet we are inviting our own immuno disorders or immunology related disease or susceptible to viral disease and other um, malnutrition undernutrition hidden hunger related diseases so the new existing and the emerging science and technologies can address the four dimensions of the food security as well as the undernourishment or malnourishment so therefore the need arises to develop the new agriculture technologies uh, by involving science and modern tools and devices to meet the challenges and to feed every day uh, to the indian as well as the global community so what do you mean by food security or sustainability the agriculture or sustainable agriculture so food security as we are witnessing four five days we uh, the, there is a lot of um, controversies going on in the european uh, continent because of the different security or lapse of different security in some countries and uh, overriding the different security and so on so forth likewise as jawaharlal nehru ji said everything can wait but not agriculture if you don't have your own agricultural commodity somebody may send you as export commodity and they will uh, um, dictate the terms and conditions so we need to produce our own so what is the four dimensions of uh, modern agriculture so the four dimensions of modern agriculture food availability even though if it is available we need to access the food the for example food corporation of india we have godowns we have multi million or billion uh, tons of grains but all the uh, grains are not affordable to everyone or access to everyone including the marginal level uh, income people so one need to access the food even though it is available even though it is produced by the farmers and food use and utilization if we have enough um, food or food grains we need to use a maximum utilization and food stability so the stability means every year or consistently year by year we are growing population we need to feed the population but we don't have the excess of land mass in fact the land mass is shrinking but the other way the the population is exploding so we need to go for intensive agriculture or scientific agriculture so what is this intensive or scientific agriculture or science and technology innovations in agricultural agriculture Uh, research and development area for example genetic modification of course there are a lot of debates and controversies going on but science is a science we need to accept the science so genetic modification is one such improvement but of course whether you are taking or not it's up to the farmers and up to the society but as a scientist we need to roll along with the technology so we need to introduce a lot of uh, genetic uh, modifications if the traits are good or if the yield is good to reduce the disease resistance uh, increase the disease resistance or to reduce the mortality and so on and so forth and the other counterpart is soil fertility every crop is based on soil except hydroponics soil fertility is one of the important factor it will play the vital role as far as yields are concerned whatever may be the crop so soil fertility we need to analyze the soil parameters every now and then every season or every year at least and recently government of india under the ags of icr they have released a soil atlas of the whole india every district they analyze the soil and they have the whole map of soil atlas and based on the soil atlas we have to choose the crop we have to choose the season and so on and so forth so based on that we can change the pattern of crop uh, cropping so that we can harvest uh, the desirable crops and desirable quality as well as quantity of the crops then irrigation technologies even uh, israel like country they have a very good uh, they have a very good uh, technology like uh, irrigation so we need to copy or, or replicate the model which they are following like drip irrigation sprinkle and, and uh, so many technologies related to uh, irrigation we need to transfer those technology wherever the arid or semi arid zones are uh, available in india so that we can maximize this under underutilized soil or the land to the maximum utilized uh, crop cultivation using it enabled that is information technology enabled service like food availability where it is available which uh, go down the, the grains are available and uh, which uh, kind of supply chain management should be adopted all this then agriculture processing technology because the agro processing industry is very nascent in india 
recently again government of india introduced a separate ministry for agriculture processing um, ministry so they are giving whole bunch of um, subsidies and uh, subsidies given for constructing a godown and industries processing value addition all these uh, things so these are all the need of the hour then food accessibility you have the food or the grains or the vegetables but how to access you need to have income so uh, you need to get some employment based on the employment you will get income income based on the income you are buying the food grains if the income is unemployment or or, or, or <laughs> what are the hello can you hear me Sir, yes, sir. Very good to hear you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you. So these are all some of the accessibility issues. Then biofortification, as I discussed or told earlier, the biofortification. A lot of rural area people are facing undernutrition or malnutrition based babies, and they are underweight, and they are facing a vitamin shortage or the weight shortage, and so on and so forth. so there is a lot of programs is going on how to value addition like incorporating the vitamin uh, vitamins in the food grains or the fruits or whatever may be the food items they are fortifying the uh, metals minerals and the vitamins in the grains and the fruits so through that uh, we are avoiding lot of vitamin deficiency based diseases so that is again one kind of uh, malnutrition or undernutrition then we are facing lot of climate change related issues so we need to have climate smart solutions based on it enabled services so that we can avoid uh, the storm hurricane or kind of uh, cyclone kind of things so that we can harvest before the cyclone or season all this so if see for example in pudukota and tiruchi they are facing lot of issues with reference to banana cultivation during the cyclonic period they are losing um, very big uh, economic or agriculture loss with reference to banana cultivation so recently every field is utilizing the artificial intelligence like uh, drone based fertigation uh, or fertilization or irrigation things and usage of robots like cutting uh, sugarcane or cutting other uh, agriculture commodity by using robots in agriculture then again as again um, uh, like the animal uh, biotechnology tissue engineering is also important one area to improve the crop improvement then livestock management this tissue engineering you can apply even livestock management like improving the chicken goat bullock cow all these uh, production and uh, dairy uh, poultry based industries then human capital now we have land soil irrigation everything but we need to have a quality trained well trained skillful uh, persons to handle this modern agricultural devices or agriculture practices so we need to empower or we need to skill uh, provide the a proper agricultural skills and we need to encourage the people those who want to jump into the area called uh, agricultural uh, research and development including the cultivation practices nowadays slowly people are uh, even it people are coming to the organic agriculture area to quitting their jobs and to jumping into this area because of the fancy uh, things as well as the revenue generation then india is facing one of the important issue that is post harvest technology by using grains by the rats and um, uh, aflatoxins kind of uh, aspergillus fungi infections during the uh, post harvest or storage godowns that also we need to sort it out uh, based on these uh, modern techniques and tools to avoid post harvest loss or post harvest uh, infections all these then storage of grains that is also there so for example in uh, if you go to again uh, western part of uh, tamil nadu or eastern part of uh, karnataka you get lot of uh, tamarind uh, production but we don't have uh, proper uh, storage of tamarind so that we can maximize our our income if you have provided uh, the refrigerated cold storage and so on and so forth so these are all some of the issues one need to take care of uh, uh, to sort it out especially the youngsters can take up any one of these area and uh, to sort it out their uh, research programs so i'll go to the other uh, philosophical area called uh, science and technology and innovation can play a critical role in producing more food by creating plant varieties that is new varieties introducing new varieties like introduction of uh, triads called uh, disease resistant drought tolerant cold tolerant and other uh, tolerant triads 
with the improved diets as well as optimizing the inputs needed to make agriculture or horticulture more productive and more attractive. So these are all some of the, again, important areas. Uh, we have a molecular plant okay. breeding uh, programs, conventional, conventional breeding, then transgenic agriculture, soil management, irrigation, fertigation. So what do you mean by fertigation? So those days we used to have irrigation, different models of irrigation, tube well, uh, and other uh, types of uh, irrigation. But now in Israel, they introduced fertigation. During the irrigation, they are mixing up whatever the fertilizer or the metals, minerals, vitamins, um, uh, uh, spraying along with the water droplets. That is called fertigation. So the same methodology you can, uh, you can uh, do dual job at the time. Adopting food production to climate change. So whatever the climate change is, people are saying are alarming or cautioning. 0.5 degrees Celsius is going to increase within uh, 50 years or so. So based on that, uh, increasing the temperature or uh, decreasing the temperature, we need to uh, develop the crop according to the adaptations or the climate uh, changes. Then again, uh, IT tools like using big data and cloud computing and robotics and things for the precision agriculture. Adopting food production to climate change using big data again, early warning systems, especially the tsunami kind of uh, or cyclone kind of uh, natural disaster so that uh, the, the, the farmers can, can escape from the natural disasters and uh, harvest their commodities before the natural disasters season. So CropWatch also cloud-based global crop monitoring system. Again, CropWatch, they are uh, cautioning or um, giving the forecast through uh, TV and other uh, media. There are uh, different technology called CRISPR technology, CRISPR-Cas9 technology that is synthetic biology. Through that also we can improve the crop yield or the horticultural crops uh, yield. Application of Internet of Things, robotics and artificial intelligence. So these are all some of the IT enabled uh, services, including the broadband, uh, that is high band, that is 5G and uh, Leo constellation from a short range to Leo constellation. So different uh, IT enabled services. So again, a number of advanced connectivity use uh, cases have potential to radically transform many aspects of farming, that is agro, agro farming by 2030. That is smart craft monitoring, uh, drone farming, smart livestock money, monitoring, autonomous farming machinery, smart building and equipment management. These are all five different modern uh, areas one need to look into, take up the technology to feed the people, to maximize the yield. So this is one such a polyhouse based or the controlled environment based cropping system. And uh, people are using this drone for uh, fertigation or uh, fertilizing, fertilizing uh, things. Uh, you can see the uh, drone, how they are using the fertilization for a larger uh, size of land mass, especially tea gardens or, or coffee gardens or uh, this thing. Again, we are talking about sustainable agriculture. So if somebody is using uh, 10 units of current, that means somewhere else, 10 kilograms of coal is burnt. So once if the coal is burnt, they are generating the current. So through the burning of coal, we are getting current, but we are we are polluting the environment at the same time. So we can avoid wherever the possible installation of solar power panels. So we can ins install one way we can minimize the expenditure for towards the energy consumption. Other way we can we can. Um, sustain the environment or save, save the environment without any carbon dioxide pollution. So this is another modern fish farming methods. A lot of Indonesians and um, Thailand people are using this kind of, it's another way of revenue generation as well as part of agriculture. So this is modern dairy farm. Even uh, nowadays in Tamil Nadu, slowly picking up a lot of modern dairy farms and some private players also playing uh, installing uh, a lot of uh, high-tech uh, high uh, modern dairies, even our own Kanjipuram and Chengalpet area, they have uh, different farms. I had been a uh, chance uh, to visiting all these farm, farms. Then poultry farm. Poultry, nowadays you can go for the breed one, that is hybrid one, as well as the country uh, chicken. So country chicken is having a huge market and you can go for that kind of uh, cultivation. That is another employment generation or revenue generation model. Then goat farming also, which is slowly picking up in the western part of uh, Tamil Nadu and southern part of Tamil Nadu. So mushroom cultivation, one of my friend who is having a uh, mushroom cultivation in uh, Uttaramerur near area, 
is exporting six tons of mushroom decay every day. Is exporting six tons. So the leftovers he is supplying the local people, and he is earning huge economic. Around uh, thousand to hundred people he is employing through that uh, industry. So this is another model that is hydroponic agriculture. Wherever the waste land or the ponds are nearby the village, you can uh, you can use make use of these ponds like floating farms or hydroponic. agriculture there are two advantages of this one to reduce the operation rate of water the other one you can maximize the cultivation within a small space so another kind of hydroponic agriculture nowadays the carrot lettuce and spinach in this palava come nearby area some people are cultivating around and they are making a lot of money on that and uh, modern fertigation, I already explained this. Fertigation is nothing but irrigation combined with fertilization. And um, finally, and uh, this is most important, agriculture called Panjagavia based uh, uh, organic agriculture. So again, uh, we can minimize the revenue or the expenditure towards purchasing fertilizer and uh, fungicide, fung uh, pesticides. At the same time, we can conserve uh, generate some employment also. So this is one of the important area, but it is neglected area uh, because of so many reasons and because of the fertilizer uh, lobby or because of the other uh, fungicide, pesticide lobby, they are suppressing this technology either directly or indirectly. But we need to look into this area and we need to validate this organic agriculture through scientifically or by using uh, technologically. And we need to employ a lot of people and install the proper technology solutions to this. So, one such organic farm nearby our area. So, this uh, organic agriculture, Bindi, you can see that is the, the lady's finger. So, there is a huge market uh, for organic agriculture, not only Bindi, all kinds of uh, horticultural crops and uh, leafy vegetables. So, organic agriculture in India needs to have a scientific validation with different process and product patterns. So we have a huge market potential if it is validated by modern science and technology tools and techniques. So uh, this is one such uh, harvesting technology. But a country like Europe or US, they can go, go for this kind of harvesting technology. But if we are uh, going for this modern technology, we, do, we don't have uh, enough uh, crop plants to harvest such a larger uh, volume. Because in India, almost majority of the farmers are marginal farmers, more than two hectares or three hectares. So they don't have to invest to this kind of uh, purchase this kind of machineries. But altogether, there are some models in Australia that is called cooperative farming. If uh, 10 farmers are associating and they investing um, or sharing the money to buying this kind of modern device and techniques and tools, they can go for modern machinery based uh, agriculture at the same time. They can form cooperative movement like dairy in what Professor Kurian did in Anand. So we can go for a <coughs> cooperative form of movement. So with these few words, I will uh, conclude my talk. And thank you once again, the organizers and the authorities of uh, Hindustan group of institutions, especially uh, Madam Elangiam, Dr. Thirumagan Sar, principal, and uh, Madam Susan Martandan, and Dr. Elizabeth, and other uh, colleagues. Thank you so much. If any queries or anything, you can. It's a, it's a very basic uh, lecture I have given. It is nothing new, but this is more useful to the students. So you can raise any doubt. I am happy to to address uh, because I had in my own experience uh, international like USD in Washington, Pullman, and um, uh, COVID Institute, uh, Australia, and West Australian State Agriculture Biotech Center. I was trained as a postdoc three years. So I am extensively worked on chickpea. So that is my favorite crop and uh, currently I'm more working on seaweeds. Again, the seaweeds and the cultivation of marine-based organisms is also a part of it. So thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It is the need of the hour. Oh. And also it will be useful to the future generation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your wonderful talk, sir. There are a few questions asked by the students. Yes, 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 you can ask. You can ask. 
Yes, sir. One girl has, one person has asked, uh, sir, how can we avoid the use of pesticides? Input? Pesticides. Yes, sir. How can we avoid the use of pesticides? So, again, I told you, it is a big lobby is uh, playing around the pesticide industries. If you want to avoid the pesticide, you have to go for uh, Panjagavya based uh, bioproducts. So we need to produce, see for example, we have 100 farmers, but what we have the technology is more on, uh, more, like uh, we are able to produce only 10 people's uh, need or uh, demand. But the rest of the 90s are naturally, they are, uh, they are for forcing to go for uh, pesticide based uh, uh, applications. So the thing is, Government of India has to initiate national nationwide uh, organic agriculture program which is related to the uh, um, um, uh, uh, materials like uh, Panjagavya or other related uh, materials. See, for example, if you go to Manamadare, there is an uh, industry called um, um, Agro Agri, uh, Aqua Agri, Aqua Agri. So they are producing a big um, um, fertilizer based, uh, seaweed based fertilizer, seaweed based fungicide, seaweed based pesticide. So that kind of thing we need to encourage is to be organic and uh, we can create employment as well as we can, uh, we can uh, 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 maximize the revenue generation also. Instead of going this um, fungicide, pesticide or fertilizer imports, we need to encourage this kind of uh, activities. It needs a larger uh, plan initiative by uh, this, uh, what do you call the Yojana Bhavan, earlier called uh, what is that? Planning uh, Commission. Planning Commission has to take up uh, this issue along with the policy makers, uh, both uh, uh, union government as well as the state government level. So that is the case we can avoid, totally you can avoid. Within 10 years, if we have a vision, we can avoid this kind of uh, application. But I told you, this fungicide pesticide lobby is a very big lobby. They will suppress this technology always and they are sabotaging this kind of activities. We need to fight with them and we need to have a strong regulations always so that we can eliminate uh, this fungicide, pesticide or the chemical based uh, synthetic fungicide or pesticide. Yeah, but yeah, they will come. Now people are slowly re realizing the importance of organic agriculture and the Panjagavya based uh, fertilizer, seaweed based materials and some of the growth promoters. Soil bacteria, acetobacter, acetobacter, isosium, many things are there. So we need to look into that and sort it out. Uh, not only the professors or the scientists, they cannot do anything individually. It needs a comprehensive plan like policymakers, politicians, political will, and, and, and um, industries also come, for, come forward. Bankers also come forward to invest on this. It's a holistic uh, issue. So we need to sort it out, uh, all the stakeholders uh, in, in across the table. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing a very clear, knowledgeable presentation with us on this platform. Thank you once again, sir. Kind attention to the delegates and the participants. Please do post your questions in the question and answer box at the end of the program. It will be clarified by our eminent speakers. Now, I now request respected Dr. C. Shamagam Sundaram, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Microbiology, to introduce the speaker of the day, Director, Armaats Biotech Training and Research Institute, Chennai. Uh, good afternoon to one and all present here. Uh, good afternoon to all uh, respected dignitaries. I have a pre very pleasant duty of introducing our Chief Guest, Dr. Armagam Pirmal. Uh, to be inspired is great, but to be an inspiration is an honor. Dr. Armugam Permal needs no introduction. Uh, we have a very distinguished personality among us today. We are grateful to him for uh, accepting our invitation to be here with us on this occasion, sir. The occasion demands, and here it is in brief, uh, Dr. Armugam Permal is a well-known scientist and an uh, entrepreneur. He received a PhD in Applied Environmental Microbiology from the University of Madras and as well as from Texas uh, Health Science University. He is presently as a director of the Armax Biotech Training and Research uh, Institute and uh, the Arshan Green Organics. He is having strong knowledge in herbal products, formulation technology, enzyme technology, and protein biochemistry. He successfully published more than 110 research articles, which is related with uh, phytochemistry and guided more than 250 academic projects. He's also designed some of the very good products like hair growth stimulants, micronutrient max disease controller, liquid fertilizers, 
flow booster, polio mat mats, and geo mats for agriculture. His patents were method for extracting an anti-diabetic pharmaceutical composition from insects, e forces ranger, SDS power ranger, uh, SDS power cut ranger, electrical cable encapsulation, etc. I'm very much honored for introducing our eminent chief guest, Dr. Armugam Permal, on this special occasion, sir. Thank you very much to one and all who present here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Dr. Armugam, sir. Sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Armugam, sir. Hello, madam. The elementary sir, our slide is not close. Panna mer kare. Parnga business and agriculture abhiya slide idke. Mangana priya. The elementary sir, our slide is not close. Agla parnga. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I think this is no, ma'am. Armugam, sir. Armugam, sir, or da. Yes, ma'am. This is uh, screen is shared by Armun sir. Yes. Okay. okay. Armun sir. Sir. Sir, share it to me. Hello. Amma, first, a first lady, parnga. That is integrated approach. Hmm. <laughs> You can start, sir. Armugam, sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Please do check your uh, audio settings, sir. Hello, sir. Audio cake class. Slide three. Hello. Ma'am, I think, sir, the uh, signal issue may be put here, ma'am. Audio settings, Ilana. Not video. Telling it. Telling it. Okay. Okay, okay. Rejoining, but I said the Marie close point of our Okay. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are able to hear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I start from law?
Hello, ma'am. Yes, sir. We are able to hear you. Hello. Hello, sir. We could able to hear you, sir. Please proceed, sir. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Comfortable, ma'am. Yes, comfortable. Hello. Sir, can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yeah, it's fine, ma'am. Clear. Ah, yeah, uh, clear. Clear. Yes, Report correct. Some technical problem. Okay. Okay. I can start. Yes, sir. Hello. The video on, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, sir. Video on, ma'am. Yeah, good. Yes, ma'am. Video on. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good sir. afternoon. Uh, sorry for the trouble. Uh, sorry for the disturbance. Um, so the, now today I'm going to discuss about a uh, few, a uh, lot of uh, vast area. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Elmalai explained very nicely. Now I'm going to explain few things on uh, focused area uh, in business in the agriculture. So what are the areas to be concentrated? What are the areas uh, are very economically feasible and uh, easily you can get money but for the uh, for the entrepreneur or a student. those who are uh, willing in agriculture business this will be highly helpful the first and foremost the productive resources are very very uh, uh, very productive resources like uh, feed you no know, feed animal feed or whatever the poultry industry is animal industry whatever it is and seeds for agriculture fertilizer uh, bio fertilizer especially i'll explain more on uh, bio fertilizer since we are doing lot of research r and d in uh, field trials every day we are doing i'll explain later and uh, equipments on agriculture uh, machineries all the things are uh, productive resources uh, which we can concentrate more on this to get more money now agriculture commodities like uh, raw materials uh, processing uh, before processing no raw materials are very very important food additives fiber etc etc and third one is uh, facilitative services so what are the facilitative services like uh, Uh, processing transportation facility or storage facilities warehouse grounds marketing insurance so many things are there uh, even uh, people can concentrate on facilitated services now before um, the voice is not audible yeah so can you see the bio products uh, all uh, bio fertilizers and uh, especially i i i would like to uh, make a clear point on uh, so many lobbies are in uh, politician side no? uh, even uh, dr elmale mentioned uh, nowadays bio fertilizers are very inexpensive reliable result oriented it is, it is even uh, any farmers can produce uh, their own Uh, from jiva jiva mrtam panjakavya so many products are available but what is being a biotechnologist technocrats uh, what is our role no we we can formulate all the things with a minimal uh, load and uh, shelf life all the scientific validation can be done and uh, through science that is very important so already we we did lot of uh, field trials validation everything it's completed for plant amendments foliar amendments all these things are very good in uh, performing agriculture of uh, the organic field what are the uh, what are the benefits of uh, bio fertilizers especially it is, it is basically it is very cheaper than chemical fertilizer uh, most of the farmers are finding difficulties because of that the, they are very poor in economy as well as uh, the, the chemical no spoil almost all the five courses so that's what uh, we are finding problem uh, during covid 19 Uh, only organic food, uh, antioxidant rich food only help to be uh, help it is lot. So we have to be very conscious on organic agriculture. Uh, this is only natural way uh, without disturbing nature. There is no additives, no preservatives in this, so it will not affect our health. So natural enriched compost. This is our own formula uh, which we are selling all over uh, Tamil Nadu nurseries as well as agriculture farming. and you look at this vermi composting uh, even uh, hindustan is having a vermi composting every day uh, we are uh, giving uh, training for farmers as well as students uh, for uh, especially vermi vermi isolation uh, from vermi compost the so, uh, worms having lot of enzymes here yeah, lot of enzymes that means growth growth hormones growth promoters plant growth promotions lot of things are there we are isolating and uh, So we are using this vermin uh, as a liquid uh, fertilizer to enhance the flower induction or flower production for especially jasmine uh, this is very commercial model we are using 
and uh, if you come to the bio fertilizer uh, even you can create a lot of uh, concepts or uh, some of the metro kitchen garden terrace kitchen garden concepts and organically we can we can provide all uh, country seeds country varieties of seeds and all uh, natural inputs so we'll come to the agriculture farming if it is really uh, integrated farming system uh, it will be very very useful for for public as well as farmers so the why we are uh, integrated farming system means once if you produce uh, seed to seed we have to produce all the things, seeds uh, fruits vegetables nuts uh, even uh, you know milk products all the things we can produce in a single one one acre is enough to produce more than 100 people once if you know the technology so agriculture farming the local demand should uh, fulfill you know if you produce a particular produce that are organic produce if easily you can sell it local local demand because we can avoid transportation and expenses all the expenditures are very high in transportation so we should encourage local market the next uh, the organic form are uh, greenhouses why we need greenhouses uh, because ours is temperate no temperate we need to control the temperature uh, controlled ambience uh, pests and diseases we can avoid all the factors so healthy risk in food growing with chemical and fertilizers so chemical free fertilizers we can apply uh, using modern technologies in organic greenhouse farming so the yield is very high because we are controlling temperature even we can set up in the uh, inexpensive way uh, there are several methods are there we can adopt any one uh, it should be economically feasible and result oriented we can adopt and we can do greenhouses for farming especially greens no a lot of residual toxicity we are uh, we are taking in the form of kire you no know, the green greens you know, every day kothamalli karvapulle all greens you know they are very very uh, toxic chemicals we are taking so that that is going to directly influence with our immunity so that's what we need this kind of technology techniques and come to the hydroponics method uh, especially may june july we are finding a lot of difficulties you know the so water issues are there and another thing fodder management we should have different technology like uh, Uh, the hydroponics the uh, improves taste and crops you know even uh, without water we can produce this kind of biomasses especially sorghum maize you no know, makka cholathil we can produce all this improved taste and better control over nutrients nutrients without uh, without chemicals we can produce it is very good you know within a, within short time you can increase the yield uh, there is no uh, no cost effect it's very cheap basically so all uh, this is uh, this is all our we are producing in our r&d center uh, near mail marvatu so we are doing all these uh, practices for our fodder management especially uh, country cows uh, milk production everything is improved because of we are feeding all organic this kind of inexpensive methods so even you can consider human uh, the wheat grass consumption is very high nowadays no and the oxygen immunity booster all the things people are selling we can produce our own through this kind of hydroponics method uh, wheat uh, wheat grass or uh, pulses also we can produce microgreens no another interesting area look at all websites microgreens uh, they are putting they selling for 40 rupees 50 rupees bunch of because it is pesticide free and uh, look at uh, poultry farming uh, as professor mentioned we are concentrating antibiotic free chicken antibiotic free chicken and uh, chemical free country varieties like azil gramabria karangoli kadaknath all the things are very very high uh, nutrition value as well as economic say karangoli kadaknath per kg 1000 rupees people are interested to buy uh, why don't we apply all our technology and uh, science to produce all these things we have to concentrate since it is a lot of uh, uh, health uh, health uh, improvements and the next area for very interesting area dry flower business because uh, since we don't have any facility to store our uh, product for a long time so it's temperate so you can concentrate on dried flowers dried flowers it requires all types of flowers especially all uh, hard varieties you know we can concentrate all these things it is really economically feasible and uh, easily you can market it is marketable online business is very booming on this particular dried flower business and look at mushroom you no know, mushroom farming is very common everyone knows everybody knows nowadays we are giving training for uh, value added products after cultivating mushrooms so what are the value added products we can we can 
collect the mushroom, fresh mushrooms, make a chips. You apply all masalas, organic masalas, make it as a mushroom chips. It's value added product. Even uh, people are supplying to Malaysia and Singapore. And you can make mushroom powder as a soup ingredients. And mushrooms, uh, mushroom capsule nowadays very famous. Vegetarian mushroom capsule. Uh, we can make it as a capsule, 500 mg, 1000 mg, like that. For a soup making process, Chinese are very, uh, very huge demand is there for exporting orders. Mushroom chips. Mushrooms, uh, capsule, all the things. Frozen chicken, another, uh, you know, even it is white or uh, country variety, whatever it is, we should have organic ingredient to frozen the chicken. So only normal uh, ACL, uh, they have a formula uh, without any chemicals, chemical additives, uh, preservatives. Uh, this industry is, uh, this is very uh, promising industries. Uh, even all the students, uh, most of the people are looking for uh, frozen without any chemical. That's all. So uh, this is very interesting area which we can concentrate. And uh, why we need uh, honey? You no, know? honey is the best immune booster. There are five foods. You no, know, five functional food are very interesting uh, immune boosting food. So by WH one, so many people are liking the five foods. What are the five foods? Number one is honey. Uh, honey. So it's uh, polyfloral honey, monofloral honey, whatever it is. In the integrated forming system, we are encouraging to produce Moringa honey and neem honey. These two things are very interesting. Uh, neem honey means you know, uh, the honeybees are collecting honey from neem flower. That's all. During neem flower season, we can we can taste even we can have a bitter taste of uh, honey with bitter taste of neem. So that is very interesting for a two, two, uh, more than 2,500 per kg. People are interesting to buy. This is another promise. You know, demand for honey is growing globally because all the people are looking for honey from India because we have a lot of herbs, a lot of medicinal plants, uh, and the polyfloral medicinal herbs, honey, are very interesting uh, marketing area uh, which we can concentrate easily. So, next, uh, turmeric. Turmeric, uh, here, you know, it's a very famous uh, turmeric uh, belt. Uh, we are we are cultivating turmeric in uh, the in our R and D research center as well as mostly Erod farmers. We are giving training, uh, biofertilizer, everything. We are providing. We are collecting them with six point nine percent of uh, curcumin. So curcumin is an active ingredient of uh, turmeric. Uh, we have to validate uh, scientifically. Validations are very very important. Validate the curcumin, curcumide one and two, uh, which is acting as the immune boosting. Uh, agents. So that is very important. So honey with turmeric is the best combination for immune booster. And very another interesting, it is not a drug. Uh, we are packing in a capsule. It is not a drug. Capsule is made up of cellulose, plant cellulose. It is vegetarian cap, uh, caps uh, concept. Um, even we can we can promote this product as a uh, food products with multivita. So multivitamin uh, capsule like that. It's not a drug. We even we validated uh, oliferin. 0.3% uh, oliferin is available. Even you can take tender without uh, drying in the direct shade net. Just uh, you just you make a, a special process less than 30% and you pack in a nice uh, pack and you study the nutritive value, nutritive analysis and oliferin percentage. You can promote as a good product, functional food for uh, multivitamin supplements. And moringa fruit, more it has a lot of uh, oliferin and uh, the good, good stamina for uh, men's health as well as calcium supplements for diabetic and old age people. We are promoting this as uh, moringa olifera fruit powder uh, for uh, the nutraceutical, general nutraceutical. And uh, it has a lot of, um, pro it, it protects liver, liver damage. As well, all the things, you know, scientifically validated, a lot of uh, journals they supported our product. And uh, this is what I said, Moringa Volifera seed, oil seeds. Uh, there are uh, three, four varieties available. Um, uh, in this uh, country variety, oil seeds uh, receives more value because of its oliferin content, up to 0.3% we, uh, we have documented. And we have a good, uh, good R&D as well as uh, training research center, as well as field research laboratory at uh, Mel Marvathur. So we are, we are giving thorough training for all these things. Now validations are very, very important, any, any products. And uh, so this is what we are doing. Uh, students, uh, uh, I request students to interact any questions, specific questions I can answer. Excuse me, sir. Very good. Uh, it is a practical, practically you are explained everything. Uh, and the, what, are, what are the training program you are having? How long you are having? 
uh, what type of industry you visit, and a one day farmer also you are told that you uh, tell sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Since most uh, so, so all the students are very interested, I know because uh, so many students they don't have any chance to interact with the farming, uh, direct farming. They want to feel the soil texture and these things, farming and all. For that, we have one day farming program. Uh, one day farming, they they can uh, every all the things, you no know, integrated farming system. Uh, more than uh, 17, 18 uh, techniques, you know, all the uh, traditional as well as scientifically sound techniques, we can uh, harvest from the harvesting, seed to seed, all the things we can teach them nicely within a one day. So morning, if you start 8.30, you can complete within 4.30, all uh, advanced tools like orgers and these things, the drones, everything we can explain over agriculture uh, practices. We can give one day training, uh, one week training is available. So agriculture, especially food and agriculture, we are giving training now. Sir, thank you so much, sir. There are a few questions from the student side. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Sir, they have asked, uh, sir, in which regions of India mushroom farming can be done without much capital expenditure? Suitable climatic conditions for it? Yeah, mostly in, not, not India. Here in the Uti, Uti, Kodekanal is the best place. Uh, you, you can choose uh, 27 degrees. Uh, less than 20 degrees optimum temperature. 27 is good one. About 27, we are finding little bit difficulties. For that, we have a lot of technology. Uh, so, so many people are using air conditioning and all. Without air condition, also we can cultivate in temperate region. So, in our area, Kodekanal uh, people are doing good. Kodekanal, Uti. Yes, sir. Any questions? Yes, sir. Any other questions? Okay. Sir, one more question is there. Yes, ma'am. What is the purpose of dried the flour powder used? For what purpose it is used? Dried flour powder. Flour. I'm, I'm not getting your question, madam. What, what is, is the, the purpose, purpose of, of using, using dried flour powder? Powder. Uh, we are, we are, we are asking flour powder. flour powder. Yeah, flour powder. No, that, that is a bouquet. I said no dried dried flour bouquet. That's a not powder. It's a dried not bouquet. Therapeutic some no, some of the dried flour is also they're using no some hibiscus uh, dried flour powder. They're using as uh, supplements. Neutrocytical supplements. It's very good for heart, heart functioning, or cardio rhythm is controlling, already scientifically validated, especially with the high viscous rose sciences, the sembarthi. Sembarthi flavor is very good. The heart rhythm controlling. Any students? Students question? Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for a very nice presentation, especially highlighting the controversial properties which is available for the students. Uh, that is also the most required uh, area. And we thank you, sir. On behalf of the School of Sciences, ACAS, and IDM, I really thank respected professors for presenting an excellent and knowledgeable presentations and clarifying the participants' doubts very patiently. Thank you, sir. I now invite respected Dr. T. Ramesh, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology, HCAS, to propose the oath of thanks. Good afternoon, one and all present here. Gratitude is the strongest bond which connects each and every one of our hearts and souls. I feel privileged to show my gratitude and pleased extremely well to present my oath of thanks in the Royal Forum. I express my honor and heartfelt thanks to our beloved principal, Dr. Srimogan, for his welcome address. I express my honor and heartfelt thanks to our beloved director, Dr. Susan Marthanton, for her special address. I express my heartfelt thanks to Professor Sandosh Kumar, head GADRR division, NADM, for his keynote address. I express my thanks to Sri Taj Hassan, IPS executive director, NADM, for his inaugural address. I thank our valuable invited speakers, Dr. S. Elumalai, Professor and Head, Department of Biotechnology, University of Madras, Dr. Sudhagaran, GM, Biotech for, for Women, Chennai, Dr. Arumagam Perumal, Director, Armas Biotech, Chennai, for their power-backed special lecture. Thank you, sir. 
I express my honor and heartfelt thanks to our beloved DDA, Dr. V. J. Billy, for his support and guidance. I extend my intense thanks to our Dean, Dr. S. Elengiam, for her delightful presence on this beautiful occasion. I thank Dr. Elizabeth Rani, Jr., Head, Department of Biotechnology, for inviting an eminent personalities for this special occasion and organizing this wonderful lecture in a very pleasant manner. Thank you, Madam. I thank Mr. Ali Haider, Junior Consultant in ADM, and Dr. Mona Priya for serving as a moderator for this program. I thank my colleagues and students of our department, Will, for their brilliant coordination in the successful conduction of this session. I personally thank the technicians, supporting staff, and all other good hearts who gave their kind support for the successful conduction of this program in a very special manner. Once again, I express my gratitude and sincere thanks to one and all present here. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I once again take this opportunity to thank each and everyone for your valuable participation in this program. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am.